Praise the Lord. It's good to be in this Bible study with you. Uh, tonight it's not live. This will be pre-recorded and then uh, broadcast at the usual time, Wednesday evening at 7.30. Uh, we're on location here in Mexico, Missouri, attending our uh, semi-annual uh, church conference for uh, New Testament Christian Church. And the theme is Reviving the Bones from Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 3. So we've had the opportunity to be in four services so far. And God bless the travel. Um, good trip. Everything worked uh, pretty good. Uh, we made it to church on time, right? Which would have been okay, you know, if we were running a few minutes behind. But thanks, thanks to God, we made it to church on time Monday night. And just having a wonderful time in fellowship and and um, just seeing the saints of God worshiping together. Um, but for right now, we want to look at the book of James, chapter one. And there's a lot of good stuff in here, right? But um, I want to pick up here in verse 19 where it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. And, you know, the, uh, the, the instructions from the Bible is uh, really God uh, imparting information and commandments, instructions, primarily to the church. Uh, because, uh, you know, sinners are going to sin. Uh, the Bible tells us in, I believe, 1 Timothy that the law is not given for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers, right? So the, the law is there um, to ensure that the people that break the law can be held accountable because you can show them this is what the law says. But for those that are obedient, it doesn't matter what the laws say. You know, if you're not interested in drinking, then all the drunk driving uh, regulations and laws have nothing to do with you. Uh, so the instructions we have here, uh, it's really to the Christian, right? Uh, because if a sinner's living in sin, a sinner that's born in sin and has not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, um, they're not going to heaven anyway. So it doesn't matter what they do, really. It doesn't matter, um, you know, if, if they follow any of the teachings of the Bible at all, uh, because at the at the end result, it's not going to benefit them. Um, so here, where he's saying, uh, "My beloved brethren," so that's brothers in the Lord, right? Let every man be swift to hear. And you know, if you've uh, tried to communicate with people. Uh, more than a couple times, you know, you'll, you'll find that uh, uh, it's not always easy, right? The, uh, the first thing you have to do if you want to talk to someone is get their attention. Um, you know, my, my father was uh, uh, a good, good, uh, good man, great, uh, great in uh, a lot of ways, but he was uh, hard of hearing. And so I learned... Um, after you know so much time that I had to say his name, I had to say dad, 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 you know, so many times. And, and when he finally registered that I was talking to him, then he would look at me. And once he was looking at me, then I could speak to him and he could receive whatever I was trying to say. Um, some preachers say that you have two ears and one mouth. So you should listen twice as much as what you speak. And uh, they, they'll go, to, go so far as to say, that's why God gave you two ears and one mouth. So you can listen more than you talk. But uh, the truth is we have two ears and one mouth because this is how God looks, right? We're made in God's image. So if anyone ever tries to tell you that you're ugly or unattractive, just remind yourself you're made in the image of God you're fearfully and wonderfully made, and we're God's workmanship. God doesn't make any mistakes. God doesn't make junk. 
so you can feel good about that. Right? So uh, to be swift to hear, um, a lot of people just want to say what they want to say, and that's all they're interested in. They have what, what's bubbling up on the inside. And uh, when I worked at the VA, uh, one of the guys, you know, we, we did like the, uh, the, uh, the desk, you know, at the clinics. And, and uh, so, you know, when you're dealing with veterans, you get all these different kinds of people coming in there. And sometimes these, uh, these veterans are upset. They're upset with the VA, they're upset with delay of care or their appointment was canceled and they had to drive three hours to get there, you know, so all kinds of craziness. But this friend of mine said, uh, he said that it's like they're trying to play a tape. You know, they, they've, got, they've got so much, you know, on their mind that they want to say and you have to let them say it, right? They, they, they get up there, uh, they're upset or whatever, whatever the case may be you know, they're just going to give you a piece of their mind. And, and for your part, you know, you're, you're there as a professional, you know, uh, working, then you just have to take, it. you have to hear them out. Don't try to interrupt them. Don't try to correct them. Uh, don't try to uh, tell, you know, don't try to tell them to calm down or, you know, some of these things that can trigger them to have even worse reaction. But it, it takes it takes work to really listen to people, um, and, and you know it, it's you have to care. I mean, you have to care about someone to even listen to them. And you know you you've all you know we've all seen it. We've all perhaps done it, where you know you you see someone in passing, and you know you uh, you've seen them before perhaps, or you make uh, that first impression you get. Uh, this person is off in some way, and so you kind of just dismiss them out of your mind, right? You, you've, already, you, you've seen them, you've evaluated, and then you just, you're already moving on to the next thing. And so whatever, if they're trying to talk to you, you know, you're really not interested uh, in what they have to say. So to be swift to hear, you know, e even as simple as that is, you know, you, you have to care about someone enough to listen to them, to pay attention. And that's work, right? You have to do work to really actively listen to someone. And, and, and some people are um, not really able. They're not good listeners. And their mind is always going like 100 or 200 miles an hour. And, uh, and they're, they're, they're not listening to what you're saying. They're thinking about the next thing they want to say, you know, in response, um, kind of like arguing or whatever. And uh, so, so they're not really paying attention to what you have to say. They're waiting for their next chance to fire their next, uh, you know, volley of whatever they're, they, they have on their mind to say. Swift to hear. And, and uh, before we leave that, you know, Jesus said several times, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And, and uh, there's nothing more important than for us as Christians to pay attention to the voice of God. And God can speak to our hearts by the Holy Spirit. He can speak to our conscience. Uh, God can speak to us, you know, as we're driving down the road or as we're at the store, uh, just, you know, in interacting and you know, so something can happen, something can come on the radio, you can read a sign uh, or something, and then God can speak, you know, in, in that moment and touch our hearts and, and tell us something that he wants us to know. And God also speaks through his word. But if we don't read the word of God, if we don't listen to the word of God, then uh, it, it's like kind of putting a, 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 mu a muzzle over the mouth of God where we don't want to hear, we don't want to be instructed. Uh, and in Proverbs uh, chapter one, uh, God speaking there, he said, uh, he said, all day long, I have stretched out my hand. Uh, and he said, but no man regarded. He said, I have called 
and you have refused. And he said, because because you would not hearken to me, he said, when your calamity comes, I will laugh at you. And it's, it's some of the most uh, kind of bone chilling, uh, scary, you know, type of verses in the Bible, but it's there, right? We don't, we may not think about it every day. We may not, um, you know, hear about it uh, very often, but it is in there. And, and, and that's, that's all that God has really, you know, to reach out to you and to me and to all the people in the world is his voice. And if we try to silence the voice of God, if we try to close our ears, uh, even in the book of Acts chapter seven, when uh, we read about the stoning of Stephen, the Bible says the people uh, stopped their ears. Right? It, it bothered them so much what that preacher was saying to them that they tried to close their ears, you know, with their hands or what, whatever, you know, if they had any kind of earplugs or what at that time, anything they could do to try to drown out that sound of that Holy Ghost preacher. And, and uh, you know, God has a lot to say, but the, uh, the important part is how receptive we are you know jesus said he that hath ears to hear let him hear and if we are willing to tune in to the voice of god it can change everything in our life uh, a lot of times uh, people run into pitfalls and problems and they face all kinds of difficulties and situations that um that god never wanted us to go through but because we were not listening to God when he was trying to warn us or, or trying to teach us or tell us something, um, you know, we end up in all these blunders. And, and then sometimes people think, well, you know, God's judging me. You know, I, I work with this guy named Rick. And uh, if, if he if he uh, if he cut himself at work or something. He looked down and he'd think, you know, it's because it's because uh, God did it to him, or because he, uh, you know, he, he was supposed to go to church with me or something. We kept him by this guy at church <laughs> so much. We tried to get Rick to church so much, and uh, but whenever something bad would happen, you know, it, he had like this guilt in his conscience about this is why this happened. But uh, but God's not the one plaguing people's lives. The, the plague that people are experiencing and the heartache and the hardships that people are facing, it's, it's simply because they've chosen to ignore the voice of God and they're doing their own thing. And, and the Bible says in the book of Hosea, they that sow to the wind will reap the whirlwind. That might be Amos. Uh, Amos or Hosea, they're very close together. I'm not sure which. But uh, if you sow the wind, you're going to reap the whirlwind. You know, we will reap what we sow. And, and everybody wants the benefits and the blessings, but nobody wants to do the work of farming and planting. So it's important to listen to what God has to say. And God speaks through his ministers, right? God's been speaking throughout this conference. We saw three more services, uh, if the Lord tarries. And, uh, you know, sometimes God speaks through the, 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 the sound of the music, the lyrics of the song, um, just, just seeing the example of Christian men and women that have laid it all on the line. They've been serving the Lord, the, the preacher today, uh, said, uh, he got saved 43 years ago, but I, th I think it's 53. Like he got saved in 69 so that's uh that's 53 years right 53 years and there he is sharing a message from his heart and and it was a blessing you know and and sometimes it's it's the life of the person speaks just as much if not more so than whatever words it is that they they're uh, they're trying to share with us and, but it's up to us to be receptive. If our heart is tender, um, then you know we don't have to worry about 
uh, being overly correct and, and uh, the Bible says in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 12 that no no chastening for the present time seemeth to be joyous um, but grievous and it, but he goes on to say but afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness and those that are exercised therein and uh, you know we, we, nobody wants to be corrected nobody wants to be told they're wrong but if we're wrong we're wrong so if nobody says you're wrong and you are wrong it's like driving down a road that the bridge is out and and that's the way so many people are living their lives they, they've got the radio turned all the way up they've got the pedal to the metal they're cruising at top speed in the darkness of life in the darkness of sin heading towards that that bridge that is washed out and all the christians and the soul winners and the preachers um are, are, are trying to flag down that driver and trying to get them <clears throat> to turn around trying to get them to stop and to turn around but if we don't if we don't want to be corrected if we're not open to hear what god wants to say to us then that's what the end result will be we're gonna we're gonna crash off of that bridge and it's going to lead to an eternal separation from god uh, in hell and later after the eternal judgment into the lake of fire and it's very 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 serious but sinners don't care right they're living in the moment what feels good they do it uh, they don't consider the consequences and it's it's kind of like money that's a touchy subject we'll talk about money but a lot of people just live from hand to mouth from paycheck to paycheck and they never save thinking towards the future and so it is in their lives spiritually they live in the moment and they take no thought for tomorrow they don't take any thought for their the end of their days on the earth they don't want to think about death even though everybody dies eventually and they don't make any preparation for this meeting when we're all going to stand before God. The small and the great, the kings, the princes, the beggars, the poor, uh, everyone, the educated, the uneducated, every soul that's ever lived will one day stand before God and will give an account. And God's going to ask, you know, why didn't we accept his son, Jesus, if we didn't accept him? And then if we did accept Jesus and, and we get crossed up somewhere along the way, he's going to say, why weren't you faithful? Why, why, did you, why did you stop? It's important to start, but it's important to never quit. And then for those that enter in and, uh, and God accepts us, we're, we've been accepted in the beloved in, in Jesus Christ to hear those words right? to hear those words spoken by God to you and to me well done thou good and faithful servant enter thou into the joy of the Lord thou hast been faithful in few things thou shalt be made ruler over many things Right? And, and that's what it's all about, friends, making it into God's heaven, being accepted, being rewarded, and being with God and all the saints of God for all eternity. That's where it's at. Be doer. Okay, here we go. Better man be swift to hear, slow to speak. Right? And... I mean, I try to practice this, but uh, it seems like I get run over in so many conversations. People are just boom, 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 boom. And then, and then uh, like last night, I was talking to a couple, you know, a married couple, and they're both like, you know, it's like they're, they're playing tennis. They're like, boom, they're like, yeah, and this and this and this happened, and boom, and she's like, yeah, and then this happened, this happened, and, and they're like, boom, and they're, you know, and they're like back and forth, and I'm like, okay, it's gonna be my chance to say something here in a second. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be rude, I'm gonna interrupt. 
Now I'm gonna say something, okay? It's like, are you talking to me? Can I talk to you too? All right, are you just talking to me? <laughs> the piece, so to speak. And uh, it's like, you know, I'm trying to think of how to answer a question, but some people are so impatient. There was one brother, I used to work with him, uh, doing church work and stuff. And no, it's not, I'm not talking about anybody in Fresno, but there's another place I was. <laughs> and uh, he'd, he'd get some kind of report about something that I said or something I did, and he'd call me. And, and like, he's upset, you know, he's upset with me. And he's like, did you say or do something? Do you say no? You know, do you say or do this? And, I, and I'm trying to think about, you know, how, I'm being slow to speak, right? You know, how am I going to respond to this? And then, you know, he'd ask me another question. He said, well, did you, know, did you do the other and this and that and the other? And I'm like, you know, now i got two questions and I'm being slow to speak. I'm trying to think of, you know, how best to answer. And man, he'd rattle off like five questions and then he'd get frustrated with me and he'd hang up, you know? And it's like, I mean, I just, you know, you, you might have all those questions, but my answer is gonna be a little slower coming, okay? I'm not a lady. I try to be very, you know, em empathetic, empathetic, and you know, I have feelings. I try to, you know, can make those connections in that way, you know. But I'm not a lady. I don't. My mind doesn't work like that. You ask me one question, you got to give me a chance, you know, to think about it. Yeah, you know, let me think about it. And uh, you know, because I, I don't, another thing, I hate to make mistakes. And if I rattle something out, and I may not understand the question, so I don't know what you're really asking me. And then I say something really quick, it could be the wrong answer. Now I made a mistake. You know, I try to avoid those. Everybody makes mistakes though. But being slow to speak, you know, it, sometimes you, you might miss a whole conversation because you're being slow to speak and they, they want to talk 100 miles an hour. You know, they sound like the auctioneer at the cattle auction. Man, dude, I don't know where they came from, but that's not even human, okay? That's not human, and I'm a human, so I can't help with that. I don't have nothing to say for that, you know? <laughs> you want to talk to me, we're going to have to slow down just a little bit, you know? Not a whole lot, just a little bit. So to speak, and uh, you know, some people stutter. You know, Steve Harvey said he used to stutter, you know, terribly. And there, I talked about this last Wednesday too. Uh, there was a, a girl on this show, and uh, and she raised her hand or got the microphone or however they do it, and, and she was stuttering. I mean, really bad. And then he called her down to like the front of you know the audience and that. And uh, and he told her, you know, before before she before she says anything, uh, to say it in her mind three times, because you don't stutter in your mind, is what he said. So he said, say it, say it in your mind three times, and then speak it out loud. And and uh, and she did that, and she didn't even stutter. And uh, one of the, the other, well, excuse me, one of the other funny things that he said was. When you stutter a lot and you're around like your family and friends and everybody knows you stutter and then they talk it to you and then they ask you a question and then, you know, and you can see it in their eyes. They're like, like here it comes. Here you go. He's, he's getting, he's getting ready to do it again. And, and Steve said that that's why that's part of the problem. Why people stutter so much is because of that, you know, they, they, you feel like this stigma and this pressure is on you, you know? So, you know, being slow to speak, it, it, uh, it also gives you an opportunity to kind of, you know, rein in your emotions. And, and, and so many times, friends, I mean, I wish I had a time machine, I could go back and fix all the mistakes I made. But all we can really do is learn from our mistakes learn from it and pray to God to help you to get better so that you don't make the same mistakes again. But being slow to speak, if, if there's a lot of emotion, you know, you, you, you feel that your, your temper is getting 
away from you or someone has said something about your mama or, um, you know, something about your kids or, you know, something about your, you know, if you're a guy, someone's talking trash about your vehicle, you know, you know, like guys don't like that. You know, talk trash about the car and never touch a man's guitar. All right. And never touch his motorcycle. All right. If he has a motorcycle. You can slow to speak. It gives you that time, that space of time to try to calm yourself because in the heat of the moment, when you're feeling those strong emotions, you could say some unkind words and once, once they're out of your mouth, you can't take them back. And, you know, it's, it's like stabbing someone or shooting someone with your words. And if you stab me or shoot me, you could apologize all day, but I'm still hurt. You know, I was stabbed. I was shot. I was injured by those hurtful words that someone said to me or vice versa. And being slow to speak, it allows you to avoid that type of situation. And uh, I mean, it, it's, it's so much better to avoid a sin than to sin and try, you know, to make things right. And if our sin is just between us and God, there's no witnesses to it, only you and God see it. Uh, then you take your sins to God, you confess, we confess our sins to God, He will, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um, but we're not supposed to sin. You know, uh, obedience is the best sacrifice. Right? If we're obedient, there's a sacrifice to hold ourselves back and not, you know, step over the line into something wrong, doing something wrong and sinful. But, um, you know, it's it's so much better to just avoid that, that uh, getting yourself into that mess altogether as much as possible. Then you have less regrets. And then if you sin in front of other people, like if, you know, if, if everybody saw me coming out of the bar and I was holding a bottle of liquor and I was stumbling and slurring my words or whatever, well, now I've sinned openly and, and, and now I have to try to uh, redeem myself and restore uh, my testimony as much as I can in front of everyone's eyes and I have to apologize to everyone. Or if you gossip about someone, you have to go to that person and confess, I was talking bad about you behind your back. And, and that's, that's, that's one of the hardest things to do. And, and, and especially if they're a dirty dog, you know, they're still a dirty dog, right? But they're a dirty dog that's like a brother or a sister or something, and, and, and God convicts you. And, and you, you have to humble yourself and abase yourself in front of this dirty dog brother or sister, you know, not, not, not that, Christians are dirty dogs. I'm just saying, they they might they might be all messed up. You know, I'm just saying. So some people are kind of out there, kind of hard to love. You know, impossible to like and hard to love or something. But you were talking about it, and then God deals with your heart. So you got to make it right with that person. Now you got to humble yourself and abase yourself before this person. You know. It's, it's not a good place to be, friends. But if God convicts our heart about anything that he wants us to make right with another person, that's exactly what we got to do. Slow to speak. Think about it. Right? My dad used to tell us uh, growing up, before you say something to someone, you should ask yourself three questions. Is it kind? Is it true? And is it necessary? And I had a lot to say, I guess, you know, as a kid, because otherwise he wouldn't have kept reminding me of this, you know. And, uh, but a lot of times it won't pass the test. Is it a kind word? Mm, no. Is it true? Yeah, it's true. Is it necessary? Well, mm, well not, not always, right? Not always. Okay, and lastly, here... Slow to speak, slow to wrath. Slow to wrath. And I know, you know, whoever's watching this, this has nothing at all to do with how you are. 
you know, everybody that I preach to seems to be very calm and placid, like a still, still uh, surface of, of water, you know, very calm and placid. But for me and the rest of uh, people that have, you know, a little bit of anger issues, um, you know, it's, it's uh, the emotions, first of all, is something carnal, right? That's the flesh. And everyone has emotions. God has emotions. But to let the emotions lead us and control us, that is the flesh, 100% the flesh. And so we have to be able to restrain ourselves by the grace of God, by the power of God. And this is another great example why every Christian needs the baptism in with and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does for you as a Christian what you as a Christian cannot do for yourself. We cannot serve God in the flesh. We cannot please God in the flesh. We can never be like Jesus in our own strength. It's impossible. And God already knew that. And that's why God already had set it all in place where he was going to pour out the Holy Spirit on the church. And if we receive the Holy Spirit, he does all that uh, heavy lifting that we cannot do it, right? There's a story about Corey Ten Boom uh, in her book called The Hiding Place. And Corey Ten Boom, uh, her father was a watchmaker. And sometimes he would travel. He would you know, travel from one town to another, ride the train uh, over there in Holland. And uh, sometimes Corey would go with him. And one time she asked her father, uh, what is sex? And her father, you know, looked at her. She was about five years old. And he said, Corey, can you pick up my case for me? He had his case with all his tools and equipment. He had gold in there, you know, to do the, the gold work and the watches and that. And she reached down and she tried to pick it up. And she said, I can't, I can't pick it up. Father, it's too heavy. And her father said, yes, Corey, so is some knowledge is too heavy for our minds to bear. And that's how he answered that question. He said, it's too heavy for you to carry right now. So we kind of avoided that. <laughs> hit, the, hit the snooze button on that one later. Right? Get, the, get back to you later, about you know, however many years. Um, but that's, that's really what the Holy Spirit does. He enables us to do things that we in ourselves do not possess the capacity. We don't have the strength. We don't have the capability to do some of the things that God wants uh, his church to do uh, for us to do as Christians. And that's where the Holy Spirit steps in. And God will make the difference for us, you know, when, when we go as far as we can go, you know, as long as we're not copping out and saying, well, I can't, it's too hard, I'm not gonna try, it's this or it's that, you know, the next door neighbors don't do it, so I'm not gonna do it, or, or whatever kind of rationalization we come up with, you know, we're good at that, you know, making excuses and stuff, everybody's good at that. But, uh, you know, if, if, we'll, if we'll just face it head on, and, and try our best, right? You try your best. And when you reach the limit of what you can personally do, then we look to God and say, God, I need you to step in here. There, there's, there's not a thing more that I am able to do. God, I need you to help me. I need your strength. I need your grace. I need the Holy Spirit here and now to help me in this moment. Slow to wrath. So having a longer fuse, you know, not to go off on people, the drop of a hat, and uh, and God helps us. I mean, the, this is the human condition, and I can guarantee you, if you have to deal with other people, people are going to get on your nerves, They're, and some people are going to get on your last nerve, and people are going to step on your toes, and it's going to bother you for as long as you are in this earthly tabernacle, as Peter said you're gonna face that battle. 
So there, there's no there's no feeling shame about, you know, you still get upset with people and you still have these strong feelings or whatever. But it's about learning how best to control it. And with God's help, I'm, I'm usually okay. But uh, when I get really tired or if I'm in a lot of pain and something just comes out of nowhere out of left field and I didn't see it coming, that's when I have to really, yeah, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm still, still trying because uh, it's important how we live because your life may be the only Bible some people will ever read. And if, if we don't show them a proper Christian life, if we don't give them a proper Christian example, it can definitely have an impact on whether that soul is ever reached for Christ or not. And uh, it's not all on us. You know, I mean, God, God does his part and we have our part. And each soul is accountable unto God for their own decisions. But, uh, you know, as much as possible, you know, the Bible says, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. He said, uh, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. So instead of always, um, you know, pick, try to pick a fight, Instead of always looking for a chance to fight with someone and argue with someone and talk politics, whatever, uh, looking for an opportunity to shine your light and to be a blessing. And that's, that's the desire of my heart. I just want to be a blessing. God, make me a blessing. I want to be a blessing to the heart of God. I want to be a blessing to my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I want to be a blessing to the sinners in the world. I just want to be a blessing. And uh, and, and if I get blessed, uh, you know, at any part of in that process, that's all good with me. But I'd rather be a blessing than get a blessing. Because being a blessing, it does something. There, there's just a satisfaction and a joy when you know you, you did something that, that helps someone else. All right, and I think that's about all the time we're gonna put into this. Slow to wrath, but just lastly here, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So, yeah, it says that. Yeah. And, but this is how you know man didn't write the Bible because no man will put that in there. There's another strange verse in the scripture in Ephesians, I think it's chapter six of Ephesians, five or six. Some strange verse in there that says, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. I know, right? Why, why would that be in there? Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody knows it's fun for men to tease children, right? That's, that's, you know, one of the things that's fun for men. But he said, provoke not your children to wrath. At least they'd be discouraged. But what? Raise them and nurture them in the admonition of the Lord. So uh, the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. So when we fly off the handle and we go off on somebody and we let the flesh take over and our face turns red, if, you know, if you have a face that has that kind of uh, change, change of color, there's nothing good for God in that. And and, uh, you know, and, and then you don't even feel good about yourself. If, if you lose control, that other person won in that situation. And so if the if your ultimate goal, if you're competitive, you like to win, just don't give them the satisfaction, right? Whoever loses control is the loser in any of those types of exchanges, arguments, interaction, whatever you, whatever that precipitated that situation Whoever flies off the handle is the loser. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, uh, a person that hath no rule over their spirit is like a city without walls, uh, you know, with, with the gates broken down and without walls. So there's there's no defense there. The enemy can come and go at will. Um, so God can give us more self-control than that. He said, for the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, Faith, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, right? Against such there is no law. And temperance is that restraining, right? Now, 
holding back. Right? It's like being the like being the child and the parent at the same time. You know, the child wants to run and get all kind of mischief, and the parent says no. <laughs> you sit down and be quiet, right? So the Holy Spirit, that fruit of the Spirit, tempers to control, right? And we look forward to being in service with you in person this Sunday in Fresno, 4581 East Dakota Avenue, Fresno, California, 93726, 1.30 p.m. this Sunday, Pacific time. And uh, continue to pray for us for safe travel and grace and mercy uh, to return home. We're, we're, uh, we're, uh, our group is all um, scheduled to drive um, to the airport Friday, sometime Friday, and then our, our flights are leaving fr late Friday afternoon, early evening from St. Louis. So we look forward to seeing you again soon, and may God richly bless you. Have a great night.